In this week's episode, I'll show you another way to print really flexible filament on an Ender 3, CR10 Mini, or a CR10. And we'll use it to print these really nice flexible feet for my Ender 3 to make it run a little bit quieter. I'll show you how I did it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. In my previous video, I showed how you could 3D print a replacement extruder top for your CR10 Mini. And then you insert a small section of PTFE tube that's cut at an angle to go between the gear and the idler wheel. And that allowed me to print very flexible Ninja Flex or 85A Shore Hardness TPU. Very, very flexible. Well, I found something better. It's the Simi CNC EZR. This is designed for the PTFE tube to come all the way in and it's actually designed to go between the gear and the idler wheel so the Ninja Flex can't escape in any way, shape, or form. And the best part is you can mount this on just about any extruder top, including the Ender 3, CR10 Mini, and CR10. So I'm going to install this on my Ender 3. But before I do that, let me explain the differences in TPU. Because I had some people say they could print TPU on their Ender 3 or CR10 Mini without any modification. It depends on what type of TPU you have and what shore hardness it is. Now let me explain the type of material we're going to print on the Ender 3. It's this very, very flexible material. It's like a rubber band. It'll stretch and return to form. This is a 85A shore hardness TPU, which stands for thermoplastic polyurethane. The U is urethane. So this is an 85A shore hardness, which is different than other TPUs. There's some TPUs that are semi-flex, or they're flexible, but not nearly as flexible as this. This one is like pushing a rope. It does not want to go through any gap. So this will get caught in the stock Ender 3. Now some people have said they've printed TPU fine on their Ender 3 with the stock extruders. Like this one is TPU. It's flexible. I can wrap it around. And it comes right back but it's stiffer it's almost a semi-flex so this one will actually push through gaps so this tpu would print without any modification but printing this flexible stuff this is much much more difficult and a lot of times it's labeled ninja flex i think that's just a brand name but that's what i want to print on here because this is really really handy for making all kinds of little practical prints the first step is to disconnect the PTFE tube from the coupling or just unscrew it and then pull the wires out of the way. The next step was to loosen the set screws and remove the stepper motor gear. The Allen wrench that fits this is actually included in the EZR kit. The next step was to loosen and remove the screw that holds the pivot arm in place. Once that's out of place I could remove the spring. The next step was to remove the three screws that hold the extruder top to the motor. Now you want to hold the motor when you do this because when that final screw is removed, the motor will drop because there's nothing else holding it in place. There's four Phillips head screws that go into the EZR extruder top. I put those screws in place and that way I could set the whole unit on top of the motor and bracket and tighten it up. There's no pivoting arm or spring to worry about. That's built into the EZR extruder top. Just tighten these four screws and then on to the next step. The EZR extruder comes with its own gear and you slide that in with the teeth on top and push it down to just about flush with the top of the EZR. In fact, mine was just slightly recessed. You want to get that lined up at the hole where the filament comes in. The next step was actually the hardest part. I had to push the PTFE tubing in so hard because of that metal coupling in fact, Capricorn tubing was too tight, so I went with the standard PTFE tubing. I had to push that in until it bottomed out in the channel. The final step was just to install the knob that goes on top of the stepper motor, and this thing is really handy. You use this to manually wind the filament in, and with this flexible filament, it worked fantastic. The kit came with a lock for the coupling, but it fit so tight I probably didn't need it, but I put it on anyway. This is the 85A Ninja Flex filament that I'm going to actually use. I used this in my previous video when I printed the flexible octopus, so I'm going to feed this into the EZR extruder. The first thing I had to do is press the red button to release the wheel, the idler wheel that goes against the gear, and then I used the thumb wheel to load the filament. I continued to rotate this until the filament squeezed out the nozzle, which I had preheated 
to 220 degrees. I found this Ender 3 foot design that slides into a 20 by 40 aluminum extrusion, so I decided to print this. The print stuck to the bed really well but pulled right off, and when I squished it I couldn't see any flaws. I think the extruder did a fantastic job, so I printed three more. To test it and to show you how this works, I actually snapped it on the top of the rail. It snapped in place, slid along the rail just fine, but still was a little bit difficult to remove, which is what you want. So I lifted the printer up to put it in its proper place, it snapped into the rail, and I have my first foot. Now I needed to install three more. So I put the printer on its side, got the three other feet, and I popped them in place. One at the back, one at the opposite front, and then one at the back. And that one was the only tough one. It fought me a little bit, but then snapped in place. So the real test was how did it feel and how did it work once it was placed on the bench. I could already tell this thing's going to be quieter. It was softer when I put it down and that bench top is like a speaker. It'll amplify any vibration and this is definitely going to help quiet it down. I was a little concerned that the printer movement might cause the whole printer to shake because of those feet but after I printed with it I could see it was working just fine. So there you have it, another option to improve your Ender 3 to print flexible material. I'll put a link to this EZR in the description below. It is an affiliate link. It helps out the channel if you buy through that link. So that's it for this week. If you like this video, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon is always helpful. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. That's it. I'll see you next week right here at Filament Friday.